European stocks fell from four-month highs, while Germany exports dropped more than expected. Priceline lowers guidance as U.S. markets can use a rest. I'm Taylor Schrantz, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Rudler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Jill Malandrina with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Scott, as we mentioned on Monday, we thought that we were going to get some upside action going into today, maybe fizzle out a little bit at the end of the week. And the oscillator this morning, it's double what it was yesterday, so it looks like we might get some digestion here. Yeah, last week's powerful move Friday led to us to believe like mm -hmm. we're going to see 1400. It wasn't a matter of if, but a matter of when. But then as you have three up days in a row and you extend from the eight day and the 21 day moving average, you know, you could get a little sideways slash downward action, a little digestion and digestion is healthy. No one wants a runaway train. You need a little bit of time to get on the bus and mm -hmm. refigure some prices and some charts. Well, we have some key pieces of data coming out today as well. 830. We have non-farm production and unit labor costs as well as DOE inventories at 1030. So what are we looking what levels are key for us today positioning in front of some of this well the question is like we're down three handles are we going to be down right. six or seven what type of pulling so i've outlined three areas of support so if you look at the chart of the s p you will see that we have an upper level area which would be a very high level area to hold and that is right around 1390 to yesterday's low of about 1394 i do think there's a chance that we come in and test the eight day moving average if you take a closer look Every time we've maneuvered this channel since the low, every time we put a high in at the t high end here, we came back and tested the 8-day and the 21-day, went to the high end, came back to the 8-day and 21-day. It's happened many times, so maybe this time we don't come all the way down to the 21-day, but why not at least test the 8-day, which is about 1383 to 1385. But I think that will be viable. So, you know, keep a radar on the best acting stocks. All right, moving along to the sector spotlight, we're going to take a look at some of the oil names. We had the USO, the ETF for the group, up 5.3%. As the underlying had some pretty much of an explosive move yesterday with some positive news out of the North Sea and California regions. But what's going to be key here, especially over the next eight weeks moving into the election, is $4 gas and the effect on the consumer. But for right now, let's check out that USO ETF and some key names within the space. Yeah, oil has been acting very well, you know, in the third quarter, ever since the lows in June. You take a look at the chart, you'll see the low here in oil. The low came right around this area. You had a big move off the lows. You saw some commitment higher. We had a peak, pulled back to the 8 and 21 day, and then we made a new high essay touching the 200 day. You know, we might back off a bit, but overall, it does seem like oil has higher prices, and that's actually probably bad for the consumer, but it's good for some oil stocks. Right. Moving along to Chesapeake, this is a name that's really been beat up, but you know what, guys? It was up 9.4% yesterday as management detailed some cost-cutting measures and some profit plans that they have that they're looking to put in place. Yeah, some, some of these plays that have been laggard plays out of, out of action come back to life. And when they come back to life, you know, sometimes you don't have to just be in a leader making 52-week highs. You look for lower pivots. And yesterday, CHK had a nice little gap up. If you take a look at the chart, you know, it didn't close near the highs, but it looks pretty good. And here's your lower level channel. It's now above all the moving averages. As long as it stays above 1872 and can hold this gap, that's my rule. If gaps hold in place, you go in that direction. You could start buying this above 1972. Then you have the top end of the channel here. No reason why this thing this year can't get back to, you know, the 200 day, which from here is about 10% higher. It's not a bad little move. All right, let's move along to Devin, ticker DVN. This is our third largest position with Stephanie and Kramer in the Actions Alerts Plus portfolio. What's great about them is that they have leaders and then they also look for value. Mm -hmm. And as a trader, sometimes it's hard to recognize value until the chart gets better. And if you look here, it looks like that chart is getting better. You have the lower level consolidation going sideways. So if you wanted to be a fundamental individual getting involved in this area, that's cool. I think traders are going to start getting a little bit, you know, chirpy about it once it gets through the 60s. So yesterday had a nice day. It's coming into resistance. You know, I'd love to see it hang out for a day and then it could power through. And if it powers through, traders will be going after this, not just investors. And this too, look where the 200 day is all the way up here at 64. That's a nice move, a nice lower level trade to higher prices, not just a leader. So I do think that's in the game for higher prices as well. Speaking of leaders, we're going to wrap it up with Chevron and ExxonMobil. These guys are hitting fresh 52 week highs and we're going to kick it off with Chevron. Yep, I remember uh, first quarter you were talking about how you liked Chevron. There was high beta there that if you mm -hmm. want to be with any of these big companies, go with it. And at that point, it was more of a, you know, buy a tier, wait for it to work out, and then add when it technically gets into play. So you buy in the hole and then you buy to add into, mo into motion here. So if you look at Chevron, you will see, you know, it is now above 
the highs of this macro area, showing you that you can be a stock picker and be involved for new highs. If you're a, a Chevron investor on a macro level, you know, you know what, equities are not dead for you. Look at it, it's mm -hmm. breaking above this higher level, it's above 110, it took a long time to get through this, almost a, a year or a little bit less. So at this point, I think this thing can get to 120, 125. You know, it has come a long way from the 95 area. So I would say, Short term, you know, if it stays above the eight day, which it should, I'd say you could buy right around 110 if it doesn't pull back. Just enjoy the ride and, and keep scaling it and trailing it as it gets to 120. And wrapping it up with ExxonMobil, this is our largest dividend payer, so favorite for multiple funds, multiple styles of investing. Yeah, and, and this too, you know, it pulled in a lot more than people thought over the course of like three months ago, but since then it's had a spirited move, it showed commitment, and now it's right near the 52 week highs. So if you look at this, these, these big, big names that investors actually own. Everyone says the investor's dead, no one owns big cap stocks, but I think if you're an investor, people do own Exxon and they probably own it for years. Right. And now they're about to get paid as it trades through new highs. So at this particular point, I know guys are looking at it above 88. There's no reason why we can't see 95 this year. It might take a little bit of time, but overall this trend since the lows here has been to the upside. So watch it as it keeps riding the eight day and 21 day moving average. Well, for you guys who are long-term investors, buy and hold is certainly not dead. We're going to take a quick commercial and dive into the trenches. Hello everybody, my name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer of T3Live.com. Really, really excited about introducing you to and inviting you to the first T3 Live Active Trader Summit. There's going to be a ton of great content, but the number one reason you want to come is you want to be able to network and associate with other like-minded people who have a burning desire to learn how to be a trader. So I'm going to ask you to make a trade. Trade one Saturday for some of your time to come down and learn strategies, tactics, techniques, and put some faces to the people that you see in the virtual trading floor in T3 Live and learn to take the trading bigger. Learn how to be a better trader than you are now. Learn the strategies. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go to T3Live.com and register. If you would like to join us at the post-event cocktail reception, you can also upgrade to either premium or VIP. That's up to you, but either way, please take advantage of the general admission, two free tickets, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a wife, bring a girlfriend, maybe bring both, but come down and expect to have a great time. Welcome back to the Morning Call. We're going to dive into the trenches and look at high beta tech, one of our favorite spaces to talk about. What's interesting here is tech has been incredibly selective with the large cap names really outperforming, which is why the S&P is up 11.3% for the year versus the Russell up only 8%. Let's kick it off and take a look at one of our favorite names to trade, Apple. Yeah, Apple's been, again, rewarding everyone on every time frame. As a macro investor, yes, if you bought Apple a few years back, mm -hmm. you're making a lot of money. As an intermediate trend trader, you're making money. As an active intraday trader, you're making money. And it all depends if you're not fighting it and using price patterns. Three little entries that have happened over the course of the past, I would say, few weeks. One being right here on the chart when it went above this 580.80, which was the earnings gap. Perfect technical play. Went above it, closed in the highs, gave you a gap up, and it actually went three days before finally taking a rest here, right around that, that, that big 617, 620 area. Then, you know, you had that pull in last week with the ECB and the jobs number, blah, blah, blah. P.S. If you bought it as it held the gap anywhere between 600 and 602, you're also in good shape. So now you've had another move. Now you have 625 as resistance with, you know, with price line being down and the futures being down. I think there'll be opportunity. The question is, where could you buy it back? For me, I'm pretty light Apple. I was you know, heavier at the, you know, over the course of this run. So I would like to see it come in. I don't quite think it gets down to 613, but if this were to get down to just say 611 to 614, I would definitely consider buying a lot more back. And if it doesn't even get there, you know, look at 618, which is yesterday's low. So I would say sideways action here would be really good. Then the next time you want to enter for strength would be when it clears the 625 area. So right now look to buy the dip question is what area will that be? We'll see that intraday. And then if it gets above 625, there's your 644 right over there. Moving along to Microsoft, this name, it's still dominant in the PC space for consumer and for enterprise, but is this a good spot to chase here? Um, I don't quite think it's chasing here. You know, it's kind of, it's almost a little, it's not buying the exact dip on right. the 200 day, which has been holding, but this has been a great mega cap. This was my mega cap surprise this year. You know, we have different catchy names for people to catch, but anyway, this, um, if you look at the chart here, 
right when uh, you know you had this downtrend coming into play right in December I said that Microsoft could get frisky this year after the big base kind of like with Walmart and then pow look at this going like I think Margaret Brennan laughed at me on, on Bloomberg when I said it can get frisky PS it's had a pullback you know it's been holding the 200 day it hasn't been acting so great because everyone is saying that you know the PC market slowing down with the tablets and the handhelds blah 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 PS you look at the chart right now if you've been buying back at the 200 day you're doing well for this stock to finally get back in motion, you're going to need to see um, a, a powerful move, and that powerful move is in until it gets back above 30, 50, 31. I still think you could be a tier one owner of Microsoft moving forward. For it to start trading better, though, you know, it's got to start breaking some of these downtrends and get more volume, and that might not happen until you know later in the fourth quarter. And speaking of tablets, we're going to wrap it up with number three going into Google, which we spoke about on Monday as well. It's been stuck in a three-day range, but what's going to be key with Apple, Microsoft, and Google is going to be the tablet warfare. You have the iPad, Nexus 7, and the Surface, so it's going to be really interesting to see how these play out in back to school and through the Christmas season. But quickly, let's look at Apple. Uh, Google. <laughs> Google. Apple you know. on the brain. But between the <laughs> iPhone and the iPad. Yeah, I got the iPhone in my pocket, the tablet on the desk. Um, this one, I think, is finally going to reward macro investors. You know, in January, I was very excited about it. Had a nice little 40-point move before, missing two quarters, but then it's held big support. We've showed you on the chart. You look at the support here on Google. This 550 going sideways held the entire year, so more accumulation. And finally, it performed with a nice quarter. You could have been a nice buyer in here between 600 and 616 if you waited for momentum. Here was your buy, and now it's above the 8-day, above the 21-day, holding above this recent downtrend. I think we get a, you know, a few days of sideways action. You know, you could buy this on the dip, and buying it in the dip, you know, I'd say 630 is an area. It could actually even still come back and test, you know, around the 620, but overall, you look at this monthly chart on Google, you will see that stock hasn't done anything since the highs here in 2007. You know, the yeah. PEs come down, their cash has gone up, they have now five businesses versus one. And I do think at some point we take out this high here of 670 on a macro level, and then we retest these highs and get above it. It could be three months, six months, but within a year, I do think that we'll be above the highs in Google. And let's wrap it up with Intel, one of the most dominant names in the high margin PC microprocessor space and the name is looking really attractive from a valuation perspective. Yeah, and this one also, just like mega caps, you can't just chase momentum because they're so big, they're like moving a Mack truck right, like right. in a vessel. So <laughs> lately, uh, the mega caps have been holding the 200 day. So why not? They have the dividend, the names you know, and, and they keep doing a great job uh, you know, with whatever they're doing, <laughs> and Intel happens to be with the chip market. So here's, you know, came into the 200 day twice, had a nice little move off of it. It's above the moving averages. This too, I don't think it's gonna get anywhere very fast. You know, you had that outside day or that breakout failure right here where this was your sell signal. You know, it was in a, in a better trend um, early this year. Um, as far as Intel is concerned, if you want to draw like a trend here, this is when you had that breakout failure and then it broke down, made a, a lower high. And, and now it's trying to break or, you know, it, I would say it's, it's coming into some resistance. So let it do some work above 26. And then I do think above 27 in the fourth quarter, if the market decides to run, which I think it will, you know, that's when you get some momentum over 27. But it's a tier one long also if you want to have some tech. All right, moving along to quick hits for quick cash. We're going to spend some time on Priceline. A lot of our traders on OP have been trading along with the T3 guys. This name was bid up big into the print, Scott, and I've been following this for the past couple weeks especially. It reported after the close, got crushed down almost 100 points in the aftermarket, and the outlook just isn't good there. The international exposure is really becoming a concern for, for a lot of these companies, especially in the travel space. Well, we've talked about any company that has a, uh, excessive exposure to Europe or even mm -hmm. some exposure to our public sector that's going to have to do some constricting you hear every day about the fiscal cliff, right? Anyway, you know, this one has their hands in a lot of these spots and the valuation's high and, and a lot of people, like I've always said, I've been avoiding it just because I don't love the business model and I think a few weeks ago, people like, what would you do? I'm like, I would, you know, gun to head, I'd be short this thing or I would take puts, but lately I haven't been doing that into earnings because I've been trading them after. P.S., if, you know, if you're looking for opportunity now, you know, here's your double top. Some guys were pointing that out before earnings, which is true. You know, technically, here's your double top. What does it look like? One, two, a double top. Then you have your lower level channel, which stock hasn't been acting great compared to some of the rest. So there has been some selling into this. So somebody, you know, was looking at a slowdown here. And now what are we? We're down about 100 points. You know, this gap here gets filled at about, uh, what is this, six? It's already well through that. Um, I would say right here is your level that, that perhaps some buyers step in, and this is the last breakout that occurred here uh, back in 
you know, this year in February. So I would say if you are shorted, you know, I would look to cover anywhere between, you know, 540 and 560, this area. And, and if you're looking to play a bounce, because sometimes, you know, they will trade off their lows right. on earnings day where, you know, it doesn't always have to close in the dead lows and down 100 points. It might be opportunity. Wait for it to put a low in in the first 15 minutes. And then if you want to try a long, you trade versus that low. So just say puts a low in a 560, goes to 563, futures go lower. It doesn't go down. Maybe you buy 563 versus 560. You have a $3 stop. And, you know, if it only closes down 75 today, right. you, you might make yourself 20 points. But, you know, with that said, be very careful because this is thin, it's wide, and it moves around fast. Moving along to Salesforce.com, this is another name that the traders on Options Profits has got to take a look at. This is the computer, uh, the computer enterprise software space. We've seen M&A really tick up here because of social media, actually. So, uh, in fact, CRM just bought Buddy Media for about $690 million. So you're seeing these huge, large cap names really make that move into social media because it's such a key component to, to what yeah. everyone is doing now. I think like this whole space has been a little beat up, you know, VMware, CRM, mm -hmm. a lot of them. So it's been discounted. So they're not pricing in a great report. I think they're more pricing in that fear that also their European exposure and whatnot and the high valuation is, is a little troubling here. So at this point, if you're a macro long in CRM, you know, have some kind of collar. I would sell some calls, buy some puts. So this way you could stay in if you are, you know, for that course, if you're a trader, I would avoid it, wait for after the print, because this is one that could be up or down 15 bucks. And the option premium is so huge, you might as well wait till after the number. You look at the chart here, you know, the high was put in, you know, right around 160. So right around 136, I don't think it's gonna get a pass if it's not a great earnings and if there isn't great guidance. Moving along to FSLR, there was zero expectations for this name going into the print, and it completely blew away numbers, and we've seen the run in this name. The bear case, however, though, is management said that the margins might come in a bit, and outlook for EPS, they expect 25% year-over-year decline. So is there somewhat of a move here? Is there still more move to run, or do we think that bear case might start to play out? Because this has been a huge name that we've been trading, and very significant. I'm either going long, I'm going short, I'm buying put some you know, right. very well, distinct in terms of directional plays. Well, a year or two when people had the vision that solar just wasn't working and the subsidies will not take mm -hmm. effect, P.S., it was a great short. So there was a great bear case. And just like anything, sometimes one man's you know, trash is another, another treasure. treasure. And if you look back here a year or so ago, look where the stock was. It was at 180, then it came down to 100. I remember traders, you know, knocking their heads against the wall, trying to be short. And then finally when it broke this 110, you know, and then again at 80, it's been a great move to the downside. But recently, you know, for a trader, why not focus on it down here? You didn't have to be long into earnings. You know, earnings happened. You had a gap up. A lot of people are short. You know, Sperling, I have to give him kudos. He was all over this. You know, on this down day, he's like, I'm buying it versus the gap. And even if he didn't, you could have bought it when it crossed above this two-day pivot here, above 1849, and it was as high as almost 21. You could have made yourself, what percentage is that, like 10% in this, in this lower level crap stock if you had a nice tactic. And the tactic was good earnings, gap up, didn't go into it, shorts continue to get squeezed, and it could see higher prices. So this is something kind of like a GMCR, which we're not going to go on quick hits, that you can make tactical cash flow mm -hmm. by you know, having these type of tools in your tool belt. Moving along to Yahoo, this one had a little bit of a spike yesterday, but it kind of faded going into the close. Is there anything here? Just, I feel like it's yeah. been a really qui it's a quiet, considering <laughs> how much news is yeah, I, I think that this chart and this consolidation and this channel is going to lead to a move to about 18 at some point. You know, I've been trying to trade it for a cute breakout yesterday, right. got back long it. Taylor on the floor was talking about uh, uh, Yahoo and she's been doing it for a while. And if you look here at the chart, you will see that you have an, a sideways, sideways, long consolidation. This has been going on for a long time. That means institutions are in here accumulating and some people might be selling it. But sooner than later, the, the supply dries up and then you get something that could be a catalyst. And yesterday, it tried to break out. I'm actually long Yahoo from yesterday. Not a, not a lot. I would have liked to have seen it close better. But you know, if, as long as it continues to stay just say now above 16, I think at some point on, on, a, on a macro basis, if you're holding a portfolio of stocks, I do think at some point this can get back up to the 18 area. And I think this could be one of your holdings. Just don't expect much. Remember, they turned down 33 because they wanted 36. Right. And the stock's 16. Yeah, total mess. Let's wrap it up with my 2012 pick, Mosaic. I still think this one is going to 65. Guys, and the 2012 thesis that I had for Q3, Q4 is certainly going to go into 2013. Because of what we've seen in the Midwest with the droughts, you're going to really see that supply-demand story continue to play out. So I think yeah. we still have more room to run here.
Yes, and everyone loves when I give a 75% chance and I say give a 75% chance your 65 target gets met. Thank you. Okay, and if you timed it a few different times, you did really well. And if you look here, you know, this was that red dog reversal. You know, everyone wants to give, you know, what's the definition of a red dog reversal? That's here it is. Low, yep. yep, it trades below recent levels, closes above it, gets shorts trapped, longs out, then you see continuation, then it held, went sideways, broke above this lower pivot. This is why we talk about lower pivots exciting sometimes because it can initiate a new move. You went, you retested, and now look at it. It's in this upper level channel here holding the 8 day to 21 day and it looks like for traders and for all the ags if it gets through this level I will actually be buying it for a day trade Jill. Above 59.06 I'm in there and I do think that there's really nothing in its way until about 63, 65, and you might even get your targets exceeded up to about 68. Good so when you make that cute cash trade drinks are on you. Okay. You Have go. a great week, everybody. I'll catch you guys next week. But at the end of the day, don't forget Scott on Real Money, Options, Profits, and T3Live.com as he wraps up the charts for us.